Welcome back. This is part two of the video on lotteries, counting, combinations, and permutations. In part two, we're going to discuss the NBA draft lottery more, and we're gonna look at more probabilities. We're also gonna discuss combinations and permutations more generally. So last part, we looked at the probability that a team in the NBA draft lottery gets the first pick. And these kind of probabilities were not too hard to calculate. In this part, let's look at a probability that's a little harder to calculate. What is the probability that the worst ranked team by a regular season record gets the second pick in the NBA draft? In order to help us calculate this probability, I'm going to introduce a bit more notation. First, if we have events A and B, we will define P of A wedge B as the probability that both A and B occur. Here's another notation that we will use and a definition. We will define P of A conditioned on B, the probability of event A conditioned on event B as the fraction with numerator P of A wedge B, the probability of A and B divided by P of B, the probability of B. So we can see from that definition that the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of B times the probability of A conditioned on B. Another thing that it's equal to is the probability of A times the probability of B conditioned on A. Now, we want to find the probability that the worst ranked team by regular season record gets the second pick in the draft. Not the first pick, but the second pick. So in order to find this probability, we can break it up into a bunch of smaller probabilities and then add them together. More specifically, what we'll do is we'll find the probability of a i and b for each i equals 2, 3, 4, up to 14, where a i is the event that the ith worst team by regular season record gets the first pick in the NBA draft. And b is the event that the worst ranked team gets the second pick. Once we calculate all of those smaller probabilities, we will just add them up to get the probability that we want. Now, if i equals two or if i equals three, we're gonna get the same number for either of those two values of i. So p of a i and b in this case is going to equal p of a i times p of b conditioned on ai. So first, let's look at p of ai. p of ai here, this is the probability that the second worst team gets the first pick. The probability that the second worst team gets the first pick is the number of combinations assigned to the second team divided by 1,000. 
the second worst team is assigned 140 combinations. So we get 140 divided by 1000, which gives us 0.14. And that is our value for P of AI. For P of B conditioned on AI, we get the number of combinations belonging to the worst team in our numerator. That's 140. And in our denominator, we get the number of combinations that do not belong to the ith worst team. And that is 1000 minus 140, which is 860. So for P of B condition on AI, we get 140 divided by 860. And when we multiply P of AI times P of B conditioned on AI, we get 0 0.14 times 140 over 860. And if we simplify that, it gives us 49 divided by 2,150. For i equals four, we can do a very similar calculation. P of a, i, and b is equal to P of a, i times P of b conditioned on a, i. P of a, i this time is the number of combinations assigned to the fourth worst team divided by a thousand. The fourth worst team got 125 combinations. So we get 125 divided by a thousand, which is 0.125 for the probability of AI. For P of B conditioned on AI, we get the number of combinations assigned to the worst team, which is 140 in the numerator. And in the denominator, we get the number of combinations that were not assigned to the ith worst team, which in this case is 1000 minus 125, which gives us 875 in the denominator. So we multiply P of AI times P of B condition on AI, which gives us 0.125 times 140 over 875, and that gives us one over 50 if we simplify it. For i equals five, again, the calculation is very similar. We get for this one, the number of combinations assigned to the fifth worst team divided by a thousand, that's 105 over a thousand, which gives us 0.105. And then we multiply that by the number of combinations assigned to the worst team, that's 140, divided by the number of combinations not assigned to the fifth worst team, which is 1000 minus 105, which gives us 895 in the denominator. So when we multiply 0 0.105 times 140 over 895, we get 147 over 8,950 in simplified form. And we can do something very similar for I equals six. So for I equals six, the sixth worst team got 90 combinations. So the probability that they get the first pick is just 90 divided by a thousand, which is 0 0.09. And then the probability that the worst ranked team gets the second pick conditioned on the ith worst team getting the first pick. This is going to be 140 in the numerator divided by 1000 minus 90, which is 910 in the denominator. And this simplifies to nine divided by 650. For I equals seven, Again, very similar calculation. The seventh worst team got 75 combinations. So P of AI in this case is 75 over 1,000. We get 0 0.075.
for P of B conditioned on AI. We get the same numerator again. We get 140 there, but the denominator now is 1000 minus 75. That gives us 925. And when we multiply these probabilities, it simplifies to 21 over 1850. For I equals eight, we get 0.06, which is 60 divided by 1,000. We multiply that by 140 divided by 1,000 minus 60, which is 940. And this simplifies to 21 over 2,350. For I equals nine, we get 45 divided by 1,000, which gives us 0 0.045 multiplied by 140 divided by the quantity 1000 minus 45, which is 955. And we simplify that to 63 divided by 9550. Now let's look at I equals 10. The 10th worst team only was given 30 combinations. So the probability that they got the first pick was 30 over 1,000, which is 0.03. We multiply that by the probability that the worst ranked team gets a second pick if the 10th worst team got the first pick. And that is 140, the number of combinations that the worst ranked team has, divided by 970, which is the number of combinations not belonging to the 10th worst team. And this product simplifies to 21 over 4,850. So we have a few more. I equals 11. The 11th worst ranked team had 20 combinations. So the probability they got the first pick was 20 over 1,000, which is 0 0.02. And the probability the worst ranked team is the second pick. If the 11th worst ranked team got the first pick, is given by 140 divided by 980. And that 980 comes from 1000 minus 20. And we simplify that to one over 350. For I equals 12, the 12th worst team had 15 combinations. So we get 15 over 1000, which is 0.015. The numerator on the right is still 140, but the denominator is 1000 minus 15, which is 985 and we simplify that product to 21 over 9,850. The 13th worst team, they only had 10 combinations. So the probability they got the first pick was 10 over 1,000, which was 0.01. The conditional probability of B conditioned on AI is just 140 divided by the quantity 1,000 minus 10, which is 990. And we simplify the product to 7 divided by 4,950. And we have just one more. The 14th worst ranked team. And they only had five combinations. So the probability they got the first pick was only 0 0.005. And the probability that the worst ranked team got the second pick conditioned on the 14th worst ranked team getting the first pick is just 140 over 995, the 995 being 1,000 minus five. And we can simplify that last probability to 7, 000, seven divided by 9,950. And now, we all, now all we have to do is add up these probabilities. So when we add all of them up, we get a number that is approximately 0.1342. So we can say there's about a 13.42% chance that the worst ranked team gets the second pick in the NBA draft. So here is another problem for you. Find the probability that the fourth worst ranked team by regular season record gets the second pick. Why didn't I ask about the second worst ranked team or the third worst ranked team? Well, their probability of getting the second pick is going to be the exact same 
as the worst ranked team because all three of those teams have the same number of combinations. Now for the rest of this video, let's discuss combinations and permutations more in general, and then we will use them in later videos for other applications like poker. So we will look at the more general version of the problem that we considered before. Specifically, we want to count how many combinations of k numbers can we choose from the numbers 1, 2, 3 up to n, assuming that 0 is less than or equal to k, which is less than or equal to n. In order to count this quantity, we'll do something like what we did last time, where we look at a related quantity that's much larger, and then we'll divide it by something to get the quantity that we want. First, we'll calculate how many sequences of k numbers, x1, x2, up to xk, are there that we can choose from the numbers 1, 2, 3, up to n, if we're only allowed to use each number at most once. So we'll calculate this pretty much the same way we did with the numbers in the NBA draft lottery. We see that there are n choices for x1. For x2, there are n minus 1 choices because we can't use the choice that we made for x1. For x3, we're going to have n minus 2 choices. And then we go all the way down to xk, that one has n plus 1 minus k choices. So for each i, for i equals 1, 2, up to k, we have n plus 1 minus i choices for xi. In total, we have the product n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to times n plus 1 minus k sequences of k numbers x1, x2 up to xk that we can choose from the numbers 1, 2, 3 up to n, assuming that we're not allowed to use any repeats. Now, there's a special case when k equals n. And that case gets a special name. We will call these sequences permutations when k equals n. So for example, 1, 2, 3, 4 is a permutation of the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4. But so is 4, 2, 3, 1. So is 3, 2, 4, 1. So is 2, 3, 1, 4. And so on. How many total permutations are there? Well, we can see that there are 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which gives us 24 permutations of the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. More generally, if we have the numbers 1, 2, 3 up to n, we see that there are n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to times 1 permutations of those numbers. That number, that product, n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to 1, has a special name and notation, since it's used so much. So we define n factorial, and n factorial is equal to the product of the numbers from 1 to n that are integers inclusive. And we can define that for all n greater than or equal to 1. We'll also define 0 factorial to equal 1. And we write the factorial with an exclamation point. Here's another problem for you. How many permutations of the numbers 1, 2, 3, up to 12 
start with an odd number, but end with an even number. So now back to the quantity that we calculated. We found that there are n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to n plus 1 minus k. Sequences of k numbers, x1, x2, up to xk, that we can choose from the numbers 1, 2, 3, up to n if we're not allowed to have any repeats. Using factorials, we can write that number much more succinctly. We write it as n factorial divided by n minus k factorial. Now, we see that there are k factorial times as many sequences x1, x2, up to xk, where we don't have any repeats, as there are combinations of k numbers that we can choose from the numbers 1, 2, 3, up to n. So if we want to find the number of combinations of k numbers that we can choose from the numbers 1, 2, 3, up to n, we can take the number in the second bullet, which is n factorial over n minus k factorial. And we can divide that by the number in the third bullet, which is k factorial. And this gives us, in the numerator, an n factorial, and in the denominator, a k factorial times n minus k factorial. And this number also gets its own special name and notation. And we define n choose k to equal that number, n factorial divided by the quantity k factorial times n minus k factorial. This is defined for all 0 less than or equal to k less than or equal to n. And we write n choose k with an n over a k in parentheses. Here's one last problem for this video. Prove that n minus 1 choose k plus n minus 1 choose k minus 1 equals n choose k. There are multiple ways to prove this, and the proofs are very different. This is a pretty famous identity. It's known as Pascal's identity. Thank you very much for watching.